Okay, so let's move on to some some deeper questions that took more thought on my end anyway. Uh, so your Toronto victory last year was obviously a pretty big moment in your career. You PB'd, uh, you ran 229, you got the Olympic standard, you secured yourself a spot for Tokyo with the win. Um, and then you solidified yourself as one of the top Canadian marathoners, uh, of the, at least <coughs> generate, current generation. So can you walk us through this race? What was your plan heading into it? Did you execute like you wanted to? And then I guess like, what has that done for you since? So like, what's it done for your career since? Um, I guess going into it, it was, I had like a quiet confidence going into the race. It's funny because Josh, um, my husband, my coach, he was extremely confident. Um, he kept telling me that he had a good feeling about it the whole week leading into the race. And I was just like, okay, you're just saying that. But I, I think I had that feeling as well. Um, the last like four or five weeks of my training had gone really well, which I guess it's better than it not going well at all. But I had, I had a pretty rocky build prior to that. I had some low iron issues that probably started like the previous August and just I didn't figure that out until like a year later. <laughs> um, so once we remedied that training really came back on track. Um, but I guess like my meaty workouts, which are the ones that usually give me the most confidence had gone really well. So going into the race, I was in a good spot everything had gone well in like the recent past and even though my confidence in my build waned quite a bit our goal was to always go for the win because that's the best way to, to secure your spot and hoping that if you won um you'd run fast um, because I think that's what it would take to win against those women. Um, although since, yeah, for Toronto, I guess because it's gold label, top five would also give you Olympic standards. So technically you could run the time standard or you could be top five and it's the same thing, I guess, um, if you win. But um, that was always our goal. And it was sort of, to me, I found it a bit funny. I was not mentioned as like a favorite going into the race. And I just sort of chuckled to myself. Um, I think like I, I'm quite happy to not have to be doing pressers and stuff. Um, it's just more mental energy for me to focus on the race. And it sort of fueled like my want to really win that. And uh, so getting to the start line, um, it was a perfect day in Toronto. Like it's, it's often not that calm. So everything was sort of, I could see everything coming together. <laughs> um, I did some strides right before the race started. And I told Josh that my legs felt tired. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Um, as soon as the gun went off, I felt really claustrophobic. And I think that's what sort of hastened my, I mean, I didn't start super fast, but if you've run that course before, it's quite downhill for the first 5K. So it's not abnormal to start like a little bit faster than your, your pace goal. So that was fine at 5k um then we got to 10k and i knew that the other canadians were quite a ways behind i could just feel that and i was with one of the two pacers that alan had selected to sort of lead the olympic standard group um when i realized i was quite a ways ahead of what i would originally try to be at um 
it was sort of at that point where, I mean, there's nothing that you can do. If you're ahead of time, you're not going to slow down and just, um, like, you just have to press on. That's, that's the only thing. And I was with my pacer and we had, um, we had somebody, another guy who was running the half. So that was a great chance for me to sort of tuck in behind them. Um, and interestingly enough, it was the same pacer who had paced me previously in Ottawa or one of the two. So I knew him and I knew I could rely on him because he ran with me the whole marathon in Ottawa. Um, so it's funny because I think people think that I really like took it out hard. And that's the opposite of what I felt like I was doing. I was very much focused the whole time on finishing hard after 33K. So everything before that was in preparation to be able to turn on the jets once you got to that, I guess, the furthest end of the course, and then you were running back into the city. Um, at 15K, I was thinking, it's almost halfway before I can start racing this. And I think that helped me um, continually like think about conserving, even though by the time I got there, I did not feel like I was going to be turning on the jets. <laughs> but um, yeah, everything felt very relaxed. I started to feel fatigued around 28k. So that's sort of as you're heading towards the beaches, and it's a little bit, I think it was a little rolly. I remember feeling the wind. And it's hard because at that point it was just Jean-Marie, my pacer, and he's so small and I'm not really able to tuck in behind him. Um, but I kept thinking, okay, just get to the end and then you turn around. And um, at the end turning around, I could see Emily uh, Setlack. She was the next Canadian. Um, she looked really strong. Um, but I think I had about a minute 40 up on her and I mean I wasn't feeling great but I think I knew that if I didn't fully fall apart um, that would be enough um, it's interesting because my this wasn't a race where we wanted to see how fast I could run it was very much about uh, running smart and that was keeping those two goals in mind of um, running under the Olympic standard and being first Canadian. Um, so I think I'm excited for the future of being able to like really push it to the end but this wasn't the race to do that so I I just sort of kept it I guess more cautious um, I kept getting like these mental flashbacks of watching like those Iron Man finishes where they're crawling to the finish line. <laughs> and I was like, this cannot be you. <laughs> you have to run to the end <laughs> because Emily is coming. So just make sure that you, you run smart and just like keep it together. Um, so yeah, um, I didn't know that I had it until I turned that last corner and saw the clock and saw the finish line. And yeah, it's it was just super surreal that I finally um, I finally put it all together on the day and the day that really mattered most in my career thus far. Prior to that, I feel like every marathon I've run has been pretty disappointing in terms of what I think I'm capable of and what I what I do on the day. So, um, yeah, it was amazing to finish and have Alan there and Josh at the finish line. And my parents were there as well watching. So I'll never forget that that day. <laughs> Great, thanks, and it, it, it's great to. See, I, I like how you dissected the race for us, which is great. I always like to 
kind of hear those race insights. So on the prediction thing, I'm going to take credit for this. And Josh <laughs> reads my reads my stuff so he can uh, second this is I actually had you first overall, but you know, just saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can go back, I read it. It's still that. up. It's still up. Uh, yeah. So uh, just a couple follow-up questions. So you talked a little, again, as I said, about in race and the tactics. So what happened in that first 10K? Because the cameras didn't even know you were, I don't know if you've rewatched the race, but the cameras didn't even did. know you were up there. They were with Mid Middleton and uh, Setlack, and uh, there were a couple other people in that group, um, an American. Anyway, they yeah. didn't know you were up there. So, so what happened? I don't know. I'm not sure he's manning those cameras. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really, I think I'm a very efficient downhill runner. And starting a marathon like that, it's really just all about feeling it out and feeling what you can do. Um, so especially being in the city in those early kilometers, I just sort of went with what felt like marathon effort. And it was obviously a lot faster. I don't really know how they lost me. Maybe I wasn't one of the ones who was being tracked at all initially. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure those girls, they knew exactly. I'm sure they knew I was ahead of them, for sure. Um, and the cyclists were with me. So I don't really know what happened, but. So it was just the camera people then. I guess so. Yeah, it was just the camera people. The The lead cyclist was with me the whole time. Because it was about 15K where, at least when I was watching, I was like, whoa, yeah. everything, I know. everything's changed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. So um, can you tell us about the text from Trevor Hoffbauer after the race? Mm. The one about... Like, let's book our plane tickets. Or oh, yeah. Whatever. So that was, when did that, when did we text that to each other? July. Josh, Josh says it's, it was in July. Um, it, I knew, I've known Trevor for a really long time. I worked uh, for New Balance a while ago, and he was a rep at the time, and I did some, uh, display uh, stuff for them in windows and it was when he was sort of just having I think this dream just started and I remember thinking oh wow Trevor you've got a long way to go <laughs> and and then he he just he did it he went that way so I think we had um we must have been chatting back and forth about both doing Toronto and just, I don't know, funnily enough, just said something out of the blue, like, oh, let's book our tickets to Tokyo in the fall or something. And I, after the race, I remember that conversation and tried to like dig it up. And it it's just crazy to think how two people who were just so under the radar performed that way on the same day. Uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. He definitely like won the day though. Like I hope we can all agree on that because his time oh, is just it. spectacular. He crushed yeah. it, 209. It came yeah. out of nowhere. Now I, I said I predicted heck? I said I predicted you, but I did not predict. No, <laughs> I don't think he would. He wasn't even wearing a watch. A <laughs> it was just um, like I wanted to rewatch the race just to watch his race, really, not to watch me at all. But the whole time, he just looked so good. It was, and he's such <sighs> a big he's such a big guy too. Anyway, I I know he's like a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> 